Hello, my name is Ali Sekman. I'm a professor of computer science at Tennessee State University. In this video, I'm going to introduce Java collections. You're going to learn some of the available data structures for you in Java programming. Okay, so let's get started. This is for COMP 3110 Java programming class. The topic today is collections. So what's a collection? A collection is a data container and you can store retrieve and manipulate data using the using the methods that the collections provide for you first let's remember what an object what was the object class object class is the mother of all classes that's the superclass of all other classes i know that object the name is object but there's a class and a variable of type object can hold a reference to any object whether it is an instance of a class or an array what does that mean? We know that a subclass object is a superclass object. In other words, for example, a grad student is a student a, and Honda is a car. Since object is the superclass of all classes, you can create an object of any class and assign it to an object reference. This is what I mean. For example, you can have an object reference, OBJ, and then you can say new car that means you can assign a car to an object so any object like this can be assigned to an object reference or any array okay all class and array types inherit the methods of object class because object class is a superclass of any other classes it may be direct superclass or indirect superclass and if you recall, we had 11 methods. Let's see which ones that we have seen so far. Well, we discussed finalized method when we discussed garbage collection. And we discussed wait, 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 notify, notify all when we just uh, with uh, multi threaded programming. And we discussed two string methods before. We are going to discuss today again. And we are going to focus on equals method hash code and get class methods today okay please pay attention all the methods are public except clone and finalize okay and get class method is final that means it cannot be overridden you cannot overwrite get class method and equals method takes an object as input and it returns a boolean data type that is either true or false okay all right let's go and what else uh, some of them throws exceptions and for example this throws two different exceptions finalized throws throwable which was the the the, the top class uh, it was the super class of exception and error if you recall so let's see the important one of the important methods we have is equals okay the default implementation right here is going to return true if two objects points to the same memory space otherwise it's going to return false you should overwrite hash code method whenever you overwrite equals method although you don't have to and i will explain why let's go back to hash code method hash code method doesn't take any input argument it returns an integer okay because hash code will be is going to be important when we discuss hash tables we'll talk about it and remember wait notify notify all they were all related to what uh, multi-threaded programming and typically when we have uh, uh, multiple threads we could have a that lock issue and we can solve that issue with wait, notify, and notify all methods. Finalize was uh, used with garbage collection. If we recall, whenever an object is no longer needed, Java is going to mark it for garbage collection. And whenever Java virtual machine is available, that object is going to be deleted from the memory. Or right before the object is deleted from the memory, finalize method will be called. To string method, that's what we're going to discuss now. We already discussed it briefly, but we are going to have a more formal introduction. To string method is a method of object class. Every class can override it, obviously. 
whenever you need the string representation of a class or object more precise, to be more precise, Java automatically makes a call to the to string method. What happens if the class does not have an overridden to string method? Then Java is going to call the default implementation of what? To string method. What does it do? Here is an example. We have class car, which has one data member and it has a single constructor. And I'm creating an instance of car class. Okay. So basically, I create an instance OBJ. It points somewhere in the memory. And here I will have make as Nissan. This is all I have. Then I make a call to what? OBJ dot to string method. Well, OBJ is a car object. A car class doesn't have a to string. Then it will go to the object class to string method. So what does it do? It's going to print the type of this object, which is car, and then add a hexadecimal number that will be the memory location where this object is created. OBJ holds the memory address. So that's going to be the memory address. Similarly, when you do only OBJ, Java is smart enough to call that to string method for you because you want to print the object string representation of the OBJ and Java is going to make a call to the string method and you will see exactly the same thing. Okay, this calls object class to string method. Okay, how about this time if I have an overridden implementation? The same thing, right? The same thing. Uh, I created an object of car class. I'm making a call to two string. This time, since I have overridden method, it will say this is a make was Nissan. It's going to say this is a Nissan. Whether you do it with directly with two string or OBJ, it's going to be the same thing. It will call car class to string method. Okay, how about this example? We have uh, we have three classes: car which has two string methods, Chevy, which has two string method, and then Honda, which also has two string method. Honda extends car, Chevy extends car, okay? And in this case, I create an object of car class, I create an object of Chevy class, and I create an object of Honda class. So when I say car dot two string, this one, which two string method am I gonna call? I'm gonna go to the car class, do I have a two string? Yes, then I'm going to make a call to what? This two string method. So this one is going to call this one. And it will print what? This is a make. Make is going to be Nissan in this case. Then I go to second line, Chevy two string. It's going to go to Chevy class. Do I have a two string method? Yes. Well, also, is it overridden to string method? Make sure that there's the same signature, the same return type, the same or the same access identifier because uh, originally to string method is public, so you have to override this public because there's nothing less restrictive than public. So this will be two is gonna call this one and it will print what? This is a 2020 Malibu. Okay. Similarly, and then I have Honda to string. Since I have Honda to string, this will make a call to this one. So this is what I'm going to see on the screen. Okay. Now, talk about equals method. If we do not overwrite, uh, what happens? And uh, this is an important method. So if we do not overwrite, it only compares to object references, whether they refer the same memory space or not. String class and all the wrapper classes overwrites the equals method. When I say wrapper classes, remember for int primitive data type, we had a wrapper class called integer. Similarly, for double, we had double. I'm not going to write the others, but we have eight wrapper classes. String class plus those eight wrapper classes already overwrites the equals method for you, okay? If we need to know two references are the same, we use equal equal. 
But if content wise, if you want to check if they are equal, we typically use what? Uh, equals method. Okay. Let's see. The object class equals method is the same as equal equal operator. Let's see with an example here. So I have class car, which has a private data member, VIN number. It has a constructor. It has a method get VIN. And here I am overriding equals method of what class? Object class. It's exactly the same signature. Signature is equals underscore object. And then the same return type, the same access identifier. Let's see what it does. Instance of, by the way, that's a keyword in Java. This checks if OBJ input sent to the equals method is an instance of car class. As you say, as I said before, OBJ can hold any object reference. So is OBJ really pointing a car object in the memory? That's what I'm checking with this. Then I cast OBJ to car. Why do I cast? Remember I said that uh, for example, a grad student is a student, but a student is not necessarily a grad student, right? For example, here you can say uh, grad student, okay? You can assign a grad student to what? A student, because we know that grad student is a student. How about this way? Can you do this? Grad student equal student, can you do that? Can you assign a student to grad student? No, okay, so you have to put here what? Grad student. In other words, you have to tell Java that, hey, I am aware student is not a grad student, but I wanna make sure that you treat student as a grad student. That was casting. Here I say, well, I know OBJ is not a car, it may not be a car object, but I want you to treat it as what? Car. And get the VIN number. And if this is equal, equal, the VIN number of the color of this method, then return true, otherwise return false. Okay, let's see here. Uh, I create a car object. So A points somewhere in the memory. And then I use the constructor that takes an integer as an input that is VIN number of a car. So A will be one, two, three. So here VIN number is equal to one, two, three. Similarly, I have B. B points somewhere else in the memory. And again, VIN number is one, two, three. Okay. So now I say if A is equal, equal B. Are they equal? No, because A points somewhere in the memory, B points somewhere else. That means the memory address that A holds is different than the memory address that B holds. So this is going to return false. Okay, so this is false. How about this? A equals B. Hmm. Now, this is what we do. B is OBJ. And when I say this, this is A. Why? Because the color of equals method is A. That means this is going to be A. Now I go and check OBJ. Is OBJ an instance of car? Yes, because OBJ is A, right? In other words, Java is gonna go, we are passing an input to the method, OBJ is B, sorry. So that means Java is gonna make sure that OBJ here, points the same memory space as what? B. Because we are passing B as input and objects are passed by value, OBJ will be a copy of B in terms of memory addresses. So OBJ holds the same memory address as B. So OBJ is simply B. Is B an instance of car? Yes. So that means this part is what? This part is true. Then I go here, OBJ, I make it car. In fact, OBJ in memory points to car anyway and make get VIN number. Go to the memory space where OBJ points to and get VIN number. So what's the VIN number that this will get? It's going to be one, two, three. 
Then go to the memory space this points to. What is this A? A points to this memory space. Get the VIN number. It's going to be the same. One, two, three. Therefore, this statement is what? True. True and true is true. So it's going to return true. That means A dot equals B is true. And it will print here. Okay. All of the object class methods are public, except finalize and clone, as I showed you before. Make sure true string equals hash code methods are overridden as public. Otherwise, you get a compiler because they are originally defined as public in what object class. Get class. This method is final and cannot be overwritten. So get class is final. Okay, now there's another confusing naming. Then there is a in Java there is an object, there is a class called class. Okay, so it returns a class object that can be used to get more information about the class. So get class is going to give you more information about the class that the object belongs to. The class class is located in java.lang package, so you don't have to import. It has some useful methods like get simple name, get super class, get interfaces. Let's see with a simple example. That's easier to understand. I have an interface I car. I have a class car. They are dummy interfaces and dummy classes. I have a Honda extends cars implements I car. Okay. So let's see. I'm creating a Honda object. So let's go here. OBJ. That's a Honda object. It points somewhere in the memory. So OBJ is a Honda object. Now when I say OBJ that get class, when I say when I make a call to get class method, it is going to return an object of class, class. Okay. So this is going to return. This is going to return an object of class with capital C, and that object knows a lot about this OBJ. For example, it will know simple name of the class that OBJ belongs to. OBJ belongs to what Honda class? So it will print Honda. Then when I say get super class, it's going to print what? Super class is car. When I say print the interfaces, as you know, a class extends from a single class. But a class implements may implement multiple interfaces. Therefore, get interfaces returns an array. And I'm taking the first element of the array because there is a single interface here. It will create an array of size one, and I get the first element. And it's going to be interface I car. It's going to print that. So it will say class car, get simple, sorry, get super class is going to return class car. This will return interface I car. If I had for example, here, if I had comma I car two, and if I had interface zero and then interface one, it would return interface I car and interface I car two. Okay. Hash code. This is little, I mean, this is important. So hash code is going to make it easier to deal with large amount of data in collections. It's kind of ID for an object. But unfortunately, that ID is not required to be unique for every object. So it's an ID, but multiple objects may have the same ID. So what's the use of it? Well, assume you have a large number of objects and you're going to store it in a data collection, in a collection. It may be better to, to give an ID for the objects or put in the buckets. Okay, similar objects are put in, a, in the same bucket, for example, based on their ID. And then when you search for an object, instead of searching the whole collection, you may first go to the buckets that you think the object is in, and then you dig in more in that bucket. Okay. And the default implementation is just going to return the memory address in hexadecimal. Okay. So by default, if two objects are equal, because you remember equal equal means they point the same memory address, their hash code codes are the same as well. So that means when you overwrite equals method, you should also overwrite hash code so that you ensure that when two objects are equal, 
their hash codes are also the same. I hope you understand that. If equals method is overridden, but hash code method is not overridden, that's fine. It will still compile. But, I mean, it's not going to be efficient, for example, ordering or searching later. Hash code method, again, if equals return true for two objects, hash code method called on each one of those objects should return the same integer. If equals returns false for two objects, hash code does not have to return two different integers. So if equals is true, it should return the same, but if equals is false, it does not necessarily return distinct integers. So you cannot use hash code to test object equality. However, you may use to test object inequality. For example, let's give a very simple example. You can develop a hash code algorithm that generates hash codes for names. For example, for David, D is the character four, A is character one or letter one, V is letter 22, I is letter nine, D is four. Maybe I just assign an integer for each uh, uh, letter in the alphabet, uh, regardless of the case sensitivity and generate an integer based on that. Maybe I can use, maybe I have another name okay uh, that may have exactly the same hash code easily right i may have five other numbers the sum may be four, 40. okay so what you do is well since david and another for example let's make it up uh, i don't know how we can make it up for example uh, c a v i c it is totally uh, no E, totally nonsense, but this is going to be 3 plus 1 plus 22 plus 9 plus 5, which is also 40. As you see, this 2 will be placed in the same bucket or general address location. So when you're searching for David, you're going to say, okay, ID is 40. It should be in this general location, but in this general location, I may have more than one object. Then you do further search. Uh, uh, using equals method, okay? Here is one example. Actually, it is pretty simple. The same car class, we have VIN number, constructor, get VIN, equals is the same. This time I have hash code. It returns 14 times VIN number, okay? I just made it that way. So now I have this, I have A, points somewhere in the memory, and I have B, point somewhere in the memory and A has VIN number one, two, three. B has VIN number one, two, three. Okay. So I go here, this returns false and this returns true. And what's the hash code when I say A dot hash code? See, A dot B, sorry, A equals B returns true. And A dot hash code is the same as B dot hash code, right? Hash code, why? Because it's gonna be 14 times VIN number, 14 times 123, 14 times 123. So equals method returns true and hash codes are also the same. Any implementation of hash code follows overriding rules will be legal, like in the previous one. Uh, but it may not be reasonable. For example, check this one, public int hash code return one. Well, it says for any object, if you make a call to hash code, it will return one. This is perfectly okay, it's, it's correct overriding, but does it make any sense? I mean, for any object, it returns one. That means you're gonna put all the objects on the same bucket. So it's not gonna help you at all when you do any kind of searching in a collection. Okay, you, do you have to overwrite hash code method? No, for example, I did only overwrite equals, but I did not overwrite hash code, Java still compiles fine, I don't have to, okay? Here, let's see what's gonna happen with this one. 
Okay, so I create, I have a class robot, which has a constructor and an equals method, which is similar to the previous one. It checks if OBJ is instance of robot and then OBJ type and then the color of equals method that type. So here I create a robot, I call it rob, point somewhere in the memory, which has type and type is going to be in this one mobile. So that means this is mobile. So this will be mobile. So this is mobile. And then I have another one. It's called robot. It points somewhere else in the memory. Again, I have type and type is again what? Mobile. So this is mobile robot. Now my question to you, robot dot equals let's see if they are equals so you guys tell me what is let me see the color is robot that means this is what robot and then the parameter is rope that means obj is rope that means obj points the same memory space as this guy then i check is obj which is rope an instance of robot yes and then obj that type obj that type obj is what rob rob that type is mobile right is this equal equal this that type okay so now here is the here is the thing i say this is what this is going to return mobile and then this will return mobile okay so this is a string this is a string and uh, in this case um, it's going to return true this is going to return true so it is going to print two objects are equal and it's going to go and make a call to hash code hmm hash code is going to return what what is the default implementation it will return the memory address of this object it's going to return the memory address of this object. So even though two objects are equal, hash codes are totally different. So this is not good, okay? So you should overwrite hash code. Again, you don't have to, as we did. Uh, oh, wait a second, wait a second. Let's see. Okay, so is this, Pay attention to equals method. This time I have a robot here. So that means this equals method is an equal method defined in robot class, but is it an overridden method? It is not. Why? Because it should be overridden as what? If it was a proper overridden method, it wouldn't be robot here. It would be object here. So that's a, a equals method, but it's not the equals method that we are talking about. It's not properly overwritten. Now we will talk about collections framework. This is so important. So I will keep bringing um, certain concepts. There will be repetitions. Um, if you get bored, you can move forward, but I don't think you should. So there are three things in the collections framework. This is collections framework. And there are three things. First, there are a bunch of interfaces. In fact, we have an interface called collection, set, sorted set, list, map, and sorted map. So we have six interfaces. And we have a lot of implementations. In other words, we have a lot of classes that implement those interfaces. And we have algorithms that those classes provide for us. For example, we can add a new element. We can remove an element. We can search for an element and so on. So three things, a bunch of interfaces, a bunch of classes, and a, a number of algorithms. Core collection interfaces, that's what we're gonna discuss. They are the interfaces used to manipulate collections. The basic purpose of these interfaces is to allow collections to be manipulated independently of the details of their representation. Okay, here is the core collection interfaces. You need to remember this all the time. 
we have collections. We have two top level interfaces. One is collection, the other one is what? Map. So first top level interfaces, one collections, and the second one is map, okay? And map has only what? Sorted map as like 2.1. Sorted map is a sub interface. Then we have set as a sub interface, list as a sub interface, and then queue as a sub interface. Mostly set and list are the same or similar. Set does not allow duplicate elements. List will allow duplicate elements. And then we have another interface called sorted set. And that's all under what? This hierarchy. So this is going to be a little time consuming for you, but let's investigate this. So I have collections frame, collections interface. Okay, just like this one right here. Collections, set, list, queue, map, sorted map, set, sorted set. So collections, set, list, queue, and then I have map. So this is one level, and this is your level two. Map and set are two top level interfaces. And set, list, and queue are sub interface of collection. And sorted map is a sub interface of map. Sorted set is a sub interface of set. Then we have classes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven classes which implement those interfaces. For example, hash set implements only what? Set. Linked hash set implements set. Three set implements sorted set. Sorted set, sorted set extends set and set extends collection. Here vector implements list and list extends what? Collections. And vector also implements Q and Q extends collections. Similarly, array list and link list. And then there is something called priority queue. This came after Java 5.0. It extends or it implements Q as well. So we have three kinds of sets. Okay, these are sets. And then we have three lists and queues, and then one special queue. Okay. And map, map has three classes like hash set, hash table, oh, sorry, uh, hash set, hash map, linked hash set, linked hash map, tree set, tree map. Okay, there's something also called hash table here. We'll talk about that too. So there are four classes in this level. Okay, collections, set list queue, and then map, sorted map, and set, sorted set. So let's talk about first this guy, collections. Okay, let's be careful here. Collections interface is one of the root interfaces. The other root interface is what? Map. Some of its implementation allow duplicate elements. For example, here, uh, where am I? Uh, uh, let's see, this, uh, doesn't allow any one of those does not do not allow duplicate elements but those guys allow duplicate elements some of it some of its implementations are ordered hmm you know you put some elements uh, um, and the way that you put the elements um, the elements may be put up according to some rules okay and then we'll see with the examples there is no direct implementation of this interface. Look here. This is interface. There are no classes. You see, this is an interface. This is an interface. This is an interface. There is no direct implementation of what? Collection interface. This is collection. There is no S at the end. Okay, let's see. Here is the interface. Let's investigate this. 
since this is interface, as you know, all of them are public static, right? And the cons, we, we know that all the methods. Size is gonna, is, is a method. And is empty, contains, add, remove. Well, we have a term here, optional. This is kind of confusing, but I will explain what optional means. Because we know that anybody implements an interface must implement all of the methods. When we say optional, it doesn't mean that you're not gonna implement it. You are gonna implement it, but in a special way or in an easy way. And remove and contains all. It checks, it's going to check if you know the input argument is contained in the color of contain. So add all, remove all, retain all, clear, these are optional. And then there's something called two array and another two array, this overwritten method. And iterator, method iterator, as you see, this is iterator method because there is like parentheses here, returns an iterator object. And what's the iterator? Uh, it's gonna come later somewhere. But let me first explain what optional means. Some of the operations in the interface, collection, inter collection interface are optional. It means a collection may choose not to provide a proper implementation of such operation. Assume that you are creating your own data structure that's going to implement collections, collection, frame, uh, collection interface. But you may not need all of those methods. For example, if I don't need add method, I will say, okay, I'm gonna have a dummy implementation for it. That dummy implementation will only throw an exception, which is called unsupported operation, ex operation exception, okay? So let me show you uh, with coding, actually. Okay, so let's go and run our Visual Studio code. It comes this one, let's go here, open folder. Remember we had a learning folder, I'm gonna open it. It is brand new, nothing is in it. So I'm gonna go to learning folder, create test.java, okay? In test.java, I will have a class uh, called, let's say my data structure, okay? And then I will say implements, implements, uh, collection. Okay. By the way, collection is located in Java dot uh, Java dot util package. Okay, so I have to uh, go ahead and import that one. I'm going to do that. And that's an interface. That means I have to implement what all of it is methods, by the way. So let's go. It's automatically imported here, as you see. That's a good thing why uh, um, Visual Studio Code. And now I right click here, it says quick fix. What does it say? It says you have a class, it says implements collection, but you haven't implemented any of the methods. I will say go and do quick fix and add all implemented methods. So Visual Studio Code is gonna do a favor to me and put all the methods that collection interface has but it will put only dummy implementations. For example, size returns zero, and, and for example, is empty returns Boolean, and, and for example, iterator method returns null, it doesn't return any object, and so on. Assume that, what did we say? We said that add method is optional. Optional means I'm just gonna go here and add, draw, okay, draw, unsupported operation exception. Now, if this is unsupported operation exception, this statement will be unreachable, so you can just remove that. So this is what I will do. You see, add was optional. I went to implementation in my class and I just say throw unsupported operation exception. Throw, of course, I need to create new, right? I have to create a new unsupported operation exception object. If you recall from exceptions. And this is, by the way, a subclass of runtime exception. And runtime exception is an unchecked exception. That means you don't have to call add method in a try and catch. You can just call it. And then let's assume that I have this, for example, public uh, class 
course class test and then public static void main for example with string array okay and now i make a call i create an instance my data structure my data is equal to new my data structure i create it and then i say for example um system dot out dot println okay and then i say my data dot add so that's what i'm doing right now my data dot add okay and it takes an object okay it takes an object and let's say new i'm just creating a dummy object okay i create a new object and send it as input argument so now when i run this it's going to make a call to add but add method throws an exception so your program is supposed to crash so i'm going to go to terminal i will say java c test dot java and then i say java test and your program crashes so i guess now you understand what it means uh, an optional method okay so let's see some of the other methods size it returns the number of elements in your implementation is empty returns true if there are no elements in your collection contains it checks if it if your if the collection contains a particular object or if you can add the object it's going to return true if you can add the object it will return false if you cannot for example uh, uh, the sets do not allow duplicates assume that you added one object and you want to add it again this time you will not be able to add and it's going to return false if you can remove a particular object okay and here is the interface iterator okay iterator interface has three methods has next next remove uh, and if you overwrite i mean if you implement this interface you need to implement all of them okay and iteration means going through the elements one after another starting from the first one and an iterator is an object associated in a collection so we'll see with some examples and we have other methods collections contains all add all that means contains all checked it will return true if the collection contains all of the elements in c if it can add all elements of c it will return true remove all if it can remove all elements of c and retain all that means remove all the elements that are not also in c so remove everything uh, from your collection except the elements that are also in c clear is basically what remove all elements from the collection this is going to convert your collection into an object array okay now we are going to this an implementation class can contain duplicate duplicate elements or may not contain duplicate elements that's uh, uh, how we implement it for example set does not have but list may have duplicate elements also an implementation can be ordered and sorted ordered but not sorted not ordered not sorted but it cannot be sorted not ordered because in order for it to be sorted you need to be ordered first and we'll see all of those right now ordered collections can be iterated in a specific order if an if a collection is ordered that means you can iterate from the from first element to the last element in a specific order okay in sorted collections the order is determined according to some specific rule is it ascending for example descending okay and then there's a natural order and we'll talk about comparable and comparator interfaces that's important for us to determine what natural ordering means okay i bring this one again there's a purpose from time to time i'm going to bring this again so collection is the top interface set list queue sorted set and then map is an interface sorted map is an interface so now we are going to start with what 
interface set and those three classes. Here, sets. Again, set interface, hash set, linked hash set, and tree set. And tree set is what? A, a tree set implements sorted set, but these two do not. So what does it tell you? The elements of tree set will be sorted, but the elements of hash set and linked hash set will not be sorted. Okay? But since they're all sets, they will not allow duplicate elements. They set, link has set, or tree set, they don't allow duplicate elements, and tree set is sorted, sorted. Set will not allow duplicate elements. Sets do not contain a pair of elements A and B such that A dot equals B returns true. You cannot have. Set interface does not define any new methods, but adds restrictions. In other words, set interface does not add any extra methods that collection interface has. But somehow set uh, is going to, it inherits from this one, but it's going to limit the ability to have duplicate elements. Two implementations are has set and linked has set. Two direct implementations, has set and linked has set. Okay. Has set does not guarantee ordering of elements. What does that mean? That means in time, the ordering of the collection may not stay constant. At one point when you print, it may print one way. If you, another time, if you print, it may print another way. So the ordering may not remain constant. As you add an element, the ordering may be totally changed. So you don't know. Uh, okay, again, now we come to this one. Sorted set, in other words, tree set class that implements sorted set interface guarantees that the sorted set will be in ascending element order, sorted according to the natural order of the elements. Okay, when we talk about comparable interface, uh, it's a little bit different case. Linked hash set is the same as hash set, except elements are retrieved in the order they are inserted into the set. In the hash set, uh, you may not retrieve the, I mean, you put elements in a set, but when you retrieve, you are not going to retrieve in the same order that you put into the set. But in linked has set, that's going to be the same order. You need to use linked has set if iteration is important. Has set class will use hash code method to place objects into hash buckets. Okay. For example, all of the objects with the same hash code are placed in the same bucket. For example, David or from V, I, D, A, D. They have same hash code. That means they are gonna be placed in the same bucket assuming that they have the same hash code. All right, here's the example, here's an example. Let's remind, remind ourselves, hash set, tree set, linked hash set. Tree set is ordered, this is, not or this is, I'm sorry, tree set is what? Sorted, this is not sorted, this is not sorted. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this. I have set one, so set one is a hash set. Set one. Set two is tree set. This is hash set, tree set. And then set three is what? Linked hash set. So now I'm gonna add 90, I'm gonna create an integer object 99 uh, first, and then another one 10, another one 200. And I'm going to add them into what? Those are gonna be added to what? To this guy. Similarly, I'm going to add them to this one. I'm gonna add them to this one. Then I'm going to print set one. What do we expect to, to see? Let me clean those. So you see hash set is, first of all, tree set. Tree set is what sorted from smallest to largest. So tree set is going to have a, 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 a sorted. It starts from, it's an ascending order from lowest to highest. So that's the 
three set. Okay. Three set. This is sorted. Okay. Then let's go to linked hash set. I put 99, 10, and 200, right? I have exactly the same order. 99 first, 10 is second, 200 is third. So the way you enter the data, the way you will get it. So it's going to be ordered in the order that you enter your data. It's pretty easy. So this is uh, the same ordering, the same ordering. How about this one? Even though 99 was first, even though 10 was second, 200 was third, now the order change from what? Largest to smallest. So this is not in the same order. So this is natural order. Okay. So as you see, has set, three set, linked has set, they're all sets. Three set is sorted. Link has set you it places data in the same order that you 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 put in your collection however has set is going to have a different order natural order i guess this is in descending order okay here it is here it is has set does not guarantee the ordering of the elements oh in fact that's random order really it's random order uh well 200 was not the first uh maybe second time when we edit it's not guaranteed so when i say natural order actually i was kind of wrong this is random order it means if you run this again maybe it's not gonna be in that order or if you had another number and three set guarantees the ordering of the elements so it's gonna be sorted as you see 10 99 200 Link has set elements are retrieved in the order they're inserted to the set. 99 is first, 10 second, 100 third. Okay. All right. So let's see. Now I have has set and three set. So three set is sorted, right? If three set is sorted, hmm, for a set to be sorted, can they contain different kinds of elements? For example, can I have some integers and some string? It doesn't make sense, right? Because I cannot sort different kinds. So that means three set will allow only what? The same kind of elements. You cannot have half strings, half in, half double. But has set, there's no sorting here, so you can have it. So I'm going to go here. I have set one there, and I have set two. Remember when I said set, has set is a set, a grad student is a student. So I create a has set object and assign it to set. Similarly, a three set is a sorted set. So I create a three set object and assign it to sorted set. That's perfectly okay. Now I'm gonna add hello. Okay, so I'm going to add hello. Hello will be added to set one. No problem. Then I'm gonna go and add Ali. That's no problem. And I'm gonna go and add what? Five but like an integer object. Then I'm adding hello again. Hmm. Since this is a set, I will not be able to add hello, okay? Because it's already there. And 4.6, sure, I can go ahead and add 4.6, but when I try to add five again, this will be also what? Not added because it cannot double, it cannot be doubled. So here, I'm gonna add high, no problem. High is here. And then I'm gonna try to add high again. It's not gonna be added, why? Because if you do this, if you go ahead and add, for example, think about this one, okay? If you go and add equals high, this returns true. Because content-wise, this object, content-wise, this object and this object are the same. So you cannot have two strings that have true for when you make equals, when you make a quote equals method. Okay. So this will not be added. That will be a duplicate. And then this will not be added. 
Then I'm going to go and add Ali. Sure. Uh, it was initially high here. Then I will have what? Ali. When I try that integer, I cannot because sorted, sorry, tree set is sorted. That means it can have only if I started with string, I have to add strings. I will not be able to. Well, um, it may compile, but when you run, it will not be able to run. It will throw an exception because it's not going to be able to sort things for you. So here I'm going to clean those. When I run it, it's going to have hello, Ali5, and then 4.6, but the order is not known, right? That's random order has set, but three set is going to have hi and Ali, and that's going to sort it in ascending order. A comes from, A comes before H, so Ali will be first, hi will be second. Let's see this example. By the way, I mean, uh, this is under java.util package. So has set and set, you have to import that package. So what does it do? Let's see. I'm going to run this one as Java test, hello, TSU students, hello, CS students, right? So that means this arcs, this arcs will be what? It's going to have uh, hello, arcs zero will be hello. And then I have TSU students and then hello again and CS students. So this is my array arcs, right? Hello TSU students, hello. It has six elements. And if you notice, hello is repeated, students is repeated. Then I'm gonna go here. It says arcs.lent is going to be what? In this case, six. So it's gonna go from zero to five and it will look at this. And it has a set S, which is a hash set. Okay, it will go add arcs zero. Arc zero is hello. It says s dot add arcs zero. It's gonna make a call to this. It's going to say okay s dot add hello. Will it be able to add it? Yes, because this is the first element, so it's going to have hello here. It's going to return true. That means it's not going to go to inside this. And then it's going to go to second one, TSU. It will be able to edit. So TSU will be here. Then it will go to third, students, no problem, students. And it will go to fourth, hello again. Hmm. Then S dot at hello, this is going to return what? False. It will not be able to edit. And you see, not false is true. It will go here and it will say duplicate detected. and it's going to say hello. So it says duplicate detected, hello. Then we'll go and at CS, when it comes to student, it will give exactly the same message. So there will be only four different elements and it will say s.size, it's gonna make a call to size method of what? Has set, and then it's going to return four. Remember size was also the abstract method in the collections, uh, collection interface. Okay, how about this one? Now, I know this is very similar. So I have this time two hash sets. Unix, there, and then loops, duplicates here. Again, I'm going to run it exactly the same as before. Hello, TSU students, said that's my name on arcs. So it will go here from zero to what? Six, it will start with zero. Arc zero is what? Hello, it will take hello. It will try to add hello to what? Unix. It will be able to do it. So this will in include hello, no problem. And then it will go to what? It will go to one. So the unique ones are gonna be added. Hello, TSU students and CS, okay? And then it goes to, oh, well, if it is not unique, it's going to add it to do loops. That means I'm going to have students here, 
and then hello. The second time when it tries to add hello, it will not be able to, so it's going to put it in what? This one. Second time it tries to add students, it will not be able to do it, it's gonna put it here. Now it says remove all, Unix, go to Unix, Unix, and remove all dupes, duplicates. That means from this guy, go ahead and remove what? Hello, and remove students, okay? So it's going to say unique words are CS, TSU, does this too. And then duplicate words are hello, students. Okay, let's come back to this. So far, what did we discuss? We discussed collections framework. We had set, sorted set, hash set, linked hash set, tree set. I repeat, tree set is sorted. Hash set and linked hash set are not sorted. Linked hash set. The order is important. The first element you put, I mean, the, 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 the way that you enter is gonna be, is going to be the way that you're gonna store data in your collection. In the hash set, it's random order, okay? So now let's talk about list. Right now we are here. We'll talk about vector, array list, and linked list, okay? Collections with ordered elements that can contain duplicates duplicate so uh, we will have ordered elements with that may have duplicates so we can have repeated elements in addition to the operations inherited from the collection interface the list interface also defines operations that operate specifically on lists such as access by numeric position so we had collection interface methods and list adds some more methods on it so that we can use index to access the particular element in a in, in a collection. Three implementations, array list, vector, and linked list. Vector, array list, and linked list. Many methods that includes index, there are two overloaded add methods. In this case, there are two overloaded add methods. The first one is add that takes an object element and it appends the specified element to the end of the list. And then we have another one which takes an index and object, okay? So these are overloaded methods in the list interface. In addition to what? What it had in the collection interface. List interface, collection interface, vector, array list, linked list. Now I'm gonna talk about what? Array list. Array lists are ordered but not sorted, provides fast iteration, better than linked list if fast iteration is needed, not efficient in insertion and deletion. Let's see. First of all, array list and vector are exactly the same. The only difference is that vector methods are synchronized. If you recall our discussion in multi-threaded programming, if there are multiple threads who wants to access who wants, to, who wants to access to the same object, uh, they have to, if it is a, so let, 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 me, let me repeat. So assume that thread one and thread two works on the same data. Uh, what they do, they get a local copy, right? And thread one has a local copy, thread two has a local copy. If thread one modifies data that thread two needs, uh, if thread two access to the data before modified by thread one, then this may cause a problem. With synchronized blocks or synchronized methods, you ensure that a synchronized method can be called only by a single thread at a time. Two threads cannot make a call. Well, once a thread is calling a synchronized method, another thread cannot call any other synchronized methods. It needs to wait. So that means Array list has regular methods, but vector has the same methods, but they are synchronized. So what is the advantage? If you use, if you have multi-threaded program, and if you have vector as your data structure, since the methods of vector are all synchronized, if one thread locks on your vector and makes a call to one of the methods of the vector object, another thread cannot make a call to another method of the vector object. So that means your data is safe. However, since it is synchronized, of course, it's going to have 
some performance issues. So if you are sure that you will not have synchronization problem, then you should use array list. Otherwise, you should use what? Vector. I repeat, vector and array list. This is thread safe. This is not. Okay, link list. Now we are in the link list. Elements are ordered. It is very similar to array list, but in array list, you add and delete from one side. Okay. However, with link list, you can add and delete from both from one beginning or from the end. It's going to be slower compared to array list. So, compared to array list, but when you need to do fast insertion or deletion, you can use link list. Okay, let's see. An algorithm uses java.util.list interface. So we are in the list interface. It has an add method index object. It needs fast random access, but does not need fast insertion or deletion. Which one can be? Of course, array list is going to be faster than vector. Array list is going to have fast random access than link list, but it's not going to be as fast insertion or deletion as link list. An algorithm uses the again list interface. It does not require fast random access. That means you don't want to, I mean, fast random access means if given an index, you can quickly reach to the element in that index value, for example. It does not require fast random access, but needs fast insertion or deletion. So that's linked list. All right. So now we had set sorted set sorry three set sorted three set and now we have what um, uh, okay i mean this is like list is in order that means in order but not sorted so in order means the first inserted element is put as the first element in the list for the set it wasn't guaranteed except three set and hashed a uh, linked hash set. Here is one example. So an array list is a list, a subclass object, a superclass object. Now I'm going to create the list and I'm going to add hello. I will be able to edit. I'm going to add Ali. I will be able to edit. An integer. I will be able to edit. And hello again. I can do it. Duplicates are allowed. I add double and I add this one. Duplicates are allowed. And then I print, it's the order is going to be what? Whatever the first one is the first element, second entered is the second element, and so on. The order is the way you enter your data. Okay, so let's see what have what did we discuss so far? This, that, that, this, and then those are discussed, right? Now we are gonna come to the map. We are coming to the map. Mapping from keys to values, map. So you will have keys and you will have values. And you cannot have keys must be unique. Tree map guarantees the ordering of keys. When you have tree map, just like sort tree set was sorted. And when we have tree map, we know that uh, the, the tree map is sorted map. That means the, the keys must be ordered first. A map is not a collection. That means a map and collection. They are two different top interfaces. The map interface does not extend collection interface. You see, this is the map interface. This is collection. They have no relationship. Three implementations, hash map, Hash table, this T is lowercase. I'm confused. I mean, I would expect it's capital, but somehow they either forgot it when they develop it, then there's another reason. Hash map, hash table, linked hash map. Again, hash map and hash table, the same difference between vector and array list. Hash table is thread safe, hash map is not. That means all the methods of hash table are synchronized. If you create a hash table object and if multiple threads uh, wants to access to that object or share that object, one thread can call a method of that object at a time because all of them are synchronized. So that is thread safe. 
Okay. Hash map, unsorted, unordered. Hash table, again, the same as hash map, but synchronized. Hash table does not allow to have null key values, by the way, whereas hash map does. Let's see. And then we have linked hash map, ordered hash map. Okay, there is one method called key set of hash map, and it returns a set view of the keys contained in this map. Basically, it creates a set of the uh, keys and it can print it. So, key set returns a set. It returns the set of keys. For example, here I have H. H is a hash map. Okay. Then I have a key. For example, Java is my key. And this key refers to MIT. And then I have certification. That's another key. It return, it refers to TSU. And easy is another key that I refer to LSU. So in this case, when I say key set, it is going to create a set that consists of those three objects. Okay. And when I print it, it is going to print, uh, Certification easy Java in the natural order. C comes before E, E comes before J. Okay. Here is uh, another example for maps. Uh, let's see. I create three keys, and keys are type of integer objects, and I define values. Values are types of double object, and I have hash map. Okay, hash map, uh, and what hash map does unsorted unordered okay let's well, forget that here uh let's see and then i create a map hash map and key one this one key two value two key three and now i'm going to do map one dot get key two so what is it going to print it's going to print 3.5. Why? Because key two refers to value two. Map one dot get, and then the input is going to be a key. So if you give key two, it's going to return the value value two, which is 3.5. It's going to print 3.5. Okay. Here I have another example. I create an array of integer objects, and that means. Uh, this is pretty simple. Keys, zero is what? This one, keys two, keys three, sorry, keys zero, one, two, and this is three. And then similarly, we have value zero, value one, value two, and value three. Then I create a hash map. And what I do, put method this time, put. That means I'm going to go as the first element of the map, I'm going to use key zero, which is this one, and value zero, this one. So I'm going to put this key and value pair into my map. And I'm gonna do for each one of them. When I say get, map one get, keys three, keys three is this guy, and this corresponds to this one. So it's going to print 400. Okay. So what did we discuss so far? This one, that one, this, this, that. We had map and we had hash map, especially hash table is the same, thread safe and linked hash map. We did not give an example of this yet. Now I'm going to talk about queue, priority queue. First in, first out in the queue. So whichever is entered first, you can get that element as first, first in, first out. And in addition to whatever methods that we have in the collections framework, they also have add, subtract, and review methods. This priority, this queue has all the methods this interface collection has, and it added three more methods. And priority queue class is an implementation of it. It came after 5.0. Use priority in priority out instead of 
first in first out. For example, all those first in first out methods, but this one use priority in priority out. So you can define your priorities uh, in the in the in that queue. That one here. And there are methods like pick, poll, offer. And let's see, for example, poll retrieves and removes the head of the queue. Pick retrieves but does not remove the head of the queue. And insert, offer means insert. And it has 11, it has a default constructor that creates a priority queue with default initial capacity of what? 11 uh, elements. So here are some uh, questions. A dot 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 is a collection which cannot contain any duplicate elements. So duplicate elements cannot be contained. Okay, that means it is uh, either a hash set, sorted set, sorry, hash set, sorted set, right? Or set, because that's set. But we are talking about classes. Hash set and sorted set are two of the implementations of what? Set interface. And elements are in the ascending order. In the ascending order. Remember the order, it was sorted set. So it is sorted. Uh, in order to be sorted, you have to be first ordered. Okay. Hash set was random order. What are true about maps? A map defines mapping from keys to values. That's true. A map orders the elements in an order according to the key. Well, let's see. A map uses unique key to identify value inside the map. A map is a collection. Is a map a collection? No. Map and collection are two different interfaces. A map cannot contain duplicate keys. That's true, right? So one, keys must be unique and you cannot have duplicate keys. Which of the following interfaces that linked list directly implements? Linked list is directly implementing what? List. How about tree map? Tree map implements directly what? Sorted map not map, it implements sorted map. How about has set? Has set directly implements what? Set. Hash table. Which one? Hash table implements what? Map. Hash table. Uh, do we have that? Uh, yeah. Hash map. Hash map directly implements what? Map. Hash table and hash map were the same, but hash table was thread safe. If a class should not be duplicated, okay, not ordered and no special search facility, which of the following you would use? First of all, set does not allow duplication. List allows duplication. Okay, map is between key keys and values. Collection cannot be directly implemented. So in this case, it's going to be set. If a class should not be duplicated, naturally ascending order and no special search facility. In this case, what? First, not duplication. It must be either sort of set or set. And natural or ascending order, that means that is ordered. Uh, and the ordered is sort of set. If a class is ordered, duplicated, that's what? List. Identify two classes where objects are placed and retrieved by key values. Key. Okay. And one is hash map, the other one is what? Hash table. Okay, now I'm going to talk about um, an array list which is directly uh, in the, in the java.util package. Okay, array list. So, what is the difference between array list and list? First of all, I'm sorry, array list and arrays. Arrays, array list is more powerful than arrays. If you remember in an array, you have to determine the size of the array. For example, you can say int array new int five. You have to determine the size and it's fixed. But in array list, the size is dynamic. As you need more, it's going to have, it's going to expand accordingly. And there's better search and insertion compared to arrays. Okay, here's how you define, you know array list 
implements list. So an array list object can be assigned to what? To a list. Okay. And in the next video lecture, I'm going to explain generics, but this is like common sense. As you see here, even though array list can contain any kind of elements, when I say list and then string and array list string, that means even though array list can contain different kinds of elements, I restrict it to a what? Strings. The difference between this and that here, the size is fixed 99. This is also a string array, but the size is not fixed. Okay, here you go. So what do I do? I create a list, which is an array list of strings. And I say add Java first. Am I going to be able to add Java? Yes. Am I going to be able to add certification? Yes. Then when it says print size, it's going to print what? Two. Then list that contains Java, but here J is capital. Java is case sensitive, right? So contains method is going to return false. How about contains certification? That's true. And then remove certification. It's going to go and remove certification from the list. And if it prints size again, it's going to print what? One. Auto boxing. Auto boxing is, is, is very simple. Collections do not hold primitive data types. For example, you cannot put int in a collection. You have to create an integer class object. So, so for example, here, uh, for example, you have a list, array list. You first create a double D. It's an object double, and then you add it. Uh, but now you can do this directly 99. You are not adding actually what you do here when you say 99, Java is going to go behind the scenes. It's going to create a double object first for you, and then it will add that double object here. That's called auto boxing. Okay. All right, let's go to this sorting. For example, uh, array list has a method, by the way, there's another class, collections class. This is different collection. Collection was interface. Collection, this is an interface, right? But this collections is a class. That's, there's an S at the, at the end. No, it is collections, not collection, it's an interface. So I'm going to use, in order to do sorting, I can use sort method of collections class. Here, I create a list, I create a list, and in this list, I add Java, certification, and easy, right? Then when I say print and then list, it's going to print what? Uh, java certification easy the same order and then when i say collections that sort list it's going to sort them in the natural order and then it's going to print certification c comes before e e comes before j okay so these are like details i mean you can skip some of those slides um just want to express uh, what we have. So collections class has methods. One of them is binary search, for example. There's an overloaded binary search. It has a method called reverse and something called reverse order that returns comparator. Comparator is an interface. Okay. So reverse order is a method that returns comparator. And that sort, we have two overloaded methods and swap. Uh, in case you may need it. Okay, now let's see. Comparator is an interface. Comparator is an interface. So I have a class that implements this interface. This interface has only a single method called compare, which takes two objects as input and returns int. I do a dumb implementation here, and basically when I compare obj1 to obj2, it returns a negative number. Okay? That's what I do. Now here, I create a list. So we have a list, which is an array list. We add Java certification is easy. Okay. Now I say 
sort if if i just use sort like this it will if i don't have this it will sort first c certification easy java is based on the initial letters however here what i do here first i create an object of what this class a subclass object is a superclass object a grad student is a student that means custom comparator, comparator is a comparator but what happens here is uh yes it is compare method always returns a negative number so what is going to happen it's going to first get this two okay and it's going to return a negative number so it's going to take c before java so it will be certification java and it will keep comparing every element with each other and it's going to do a, a, a sorry since it's a negative number uh, java j will come after so j will come before certificate c so it's got like a reverse order if this was a positive number it would have been what uh, regular uh, ascending order but now it's going to be different uh, so let's see wait a second now let me let me let me think a little bit here um no this one is going to be because this one is not going to do anything special in this one java certification is easy so it's not going to do negative is yeah yeah sorry okay i was wrong uh in this case uh it's going to be since it's a negative number it's going to keep the same order however if i define another method this is you have to stop this video because this is a little deep i recall when i prepared this now my intention was uh, uh very detailed actually there so custom inverse implements the same interface as this one uh, it has a constructor but this time instead of negative it returns positive okay now i understand okay so what happens here is first i create an object of what this guy this guy okay and then i use it for the constructor of this guy custom inverse so custom inverse i create a custom inverse object that means first for this one i have memory space for this one then i have another object for this one memory space and this is linked to that and the compare method of this guy takes the opposite of the compare method of this guy so when we do the same as in the previous one it was just the way it was it's going to instead of negative number actually this will do positive numbering for you and if you do a uh, custom inverse it's gonna be the inverse but if you do directly this one as in the previous example it will be just uh, the order um, it will keep the order that the data is entered binary search method uh, let's see here you go but in order to do binary search uh, if you are familiar from data structure uh, you, you need to have first what an ordered list otherwise you cannot do binary search so first i have a method here i have a method here which takes a string list as input and i'm making a call first i create a list here so look list i look at memory space this list is here and i send this list as an input to what to this method so ls points this main memory space here and i'm gonna add certification easy is java as you see this is already ordered c e i j okay that's already ordered let's not forget that when i say collections dot binary search okay i'm going to do binary search over this list 
and I'm going to search for certification. It's going to return me the index of certification. That was the first one, zero. Index of easy is one, easy is two, Java is three. Okay, so it's going to print uh, simply uh, zero, one, two, three. Okay, I'm going to skip that. You can also skip those. And these are a little bit advanced for this class. So I'm going to uh, leave it there. You can watch the video, but I'm going to move with those. Okay. All right. Again, in order to be able to sort, the elements must be of the same type. Okay. For example, now you have an array here, array of objects, you can put array. Uh, the first object can be a string, the second one can be a card, the other one can be double. But if you want to use arrays class sort method, in order to sort, it must be the same type. You cannot sort a string and a card object. So it throws a class cast exception. Okay, I'm going to move from there. Okay, uh, let's see. I mean, this is easy. As you see here, I have an array that has four elements. When I say array.sort, it's going to sort. Uh, C is first, easy is second, Java is, is third, and Java is what? Fourth. And then when I print, it's going to print in this order, okay? And then when I say binary search, and I'm searching for is, when it ordered, the order was this is, uh, this is index zero, this is index one, index two, index three. When I do binary search and look for is, index is going to be what? Two, okay? And you can convert an array to list or a list to an array. For example, here we have an array. I sort and I print as before. And then what I do here, I take arrays and convert it to a list. So list from array, I create a list, okay? And then when I say list.get3, go to the list, get the index three, index starts from zero. So it's going to be, again, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three. So it returns three. Or you can convert, okay? But this is a little interesting. So I want you to pay attention to this. Here, I have an array. That means I allocated memory space and I have four cells. The first one uh, is um, like Java certification is easy. Then I converted this a list, but the trick is list also points to the same memory space as this one. So you don't create a copy of it. When, when I say array zero C++, this will change to what? C++. And then when I say list.set three hard, go up to three and change this to hard. And then when you print, it will say C++ certifications are. You see with array and list, they point the same memory space. So any changes that you do via each one of them will impact the other one. Okay. Now, okay, this is a good iterator example. Okay, so we have a class car, which has a, a constructor and a method called get type. So I create an array list of cars. That means my array list will hold cars. And I have a Honda, a Toyota, a Nissan, I add them. So my list will have what? A Honda, a Toyota, a Nissan. They are of the same kind of objects, right? And that's a list, that's an array list. And since it is ordered in array list, now I can have an iterator. Now I define an iterator and list, if you recall collections framework, collection interface had um, a method called iterator and it returns an iterator. So here when I say list.iterator, it's gonna return an iterator object for me. And I call it it, okay? 
And I use again generic, I want that iterator to iterate through car objects. And this guy is going to, for example, here, when I have my list, let's put it here, list. I have three cars, I have a Honda, a Toyota, and a Nissan. It is going to go and refer to the first element. So it that has next is going to be a Honda. Okay. All right. Uh, so it that has next is going to return true if there's an element. It that next is going to be the first element here, a Honda. So when I get the type, it's going to say Honda. Then iterator will go to the second element. Type is Toyota. Iterator will go to the third one. The type is what? Nissan. Again, iterator was a method in the collection interface. So list overwrites that. I mean, array list implements that and it returns an iterator. Whatever it returns, I assign that it and it that next is going to give me the first element of the array uh, of the list and it will iterate through the elements. In order for it to iterate through, it must be of the same kind, okay, of objects. All right, so let's go to this example. I have has set, has set duplicates are okay, right? There's a set. No, sorry, has set, uh let's see set hash set duplicates are not okay so why did i say they are okay let's see they are not okay sorry so i have i'm adding an integer 99 so this is the first time so this is okay so it's gonna print true because i'm able to add it so add method will return true when i try to add 99 well what does Java do? Auto boxing. So it's going to go and do this. Nev integer 99. But I already have it and this is a set. I cannot add it. This will return false. So the first one was true, second one is what? False. And then I'm going to go and add here. Well, sure, I can add here. That's not the same as what I had before. So it's going to return what? True. When I try to add 99 again, I will not be able to add it because it's already there. Okay. Duplicates are not okay. This is not, not okay. Okay. Not okay. Uh, all right. So let's go here. So you guys tell me this will be true. So it will print true. This will be false. I cannot add it. This will print false there. And then when I try that here, remember three set is sorted. In order, to, in order to be sorted, I must have the same kind of elements, right? So therefore I cannot add, because so far I had only an integer, now I'm trying to add a string. Uh, so I will not be able to, and it's going to throw an exception, class cast exception, you cannot add two different classes. Well, I hope uh, this is not too much, but data structures is a major class in computer science, as you know. So you will be able to create your own data structure from scratch in that class. But Java provides a lot of classes that are already implemented for you. So you should just keep, you can't memorize everything, but whenever you need it, I would expect that you go back to those slides and refresh your memory. So if you need a data structure that does not allow duplicates, then you should pick set, right? If you want to have thread safe, maybe you should use vector instead of array list. And if you want to have uh, uh, some kind of sorting, you use three, three set, for example. Or if you want to do key uh, and values, and uh, you do map. And if you want to have sorted keys and you know, and then you need to do tree map and so on. Uh, so this is as much as details that I can go. Uh, the, the rest is out of the scope of the class. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.